Yo, so today we're gonna be talking about the Burson Timekeeper 3i Integrated Amplifier. Ooh, shiny. So this is an incredible unit. We're going to be giving away this unit and we'll talk about that in a minute. But this wins the best award, which means that it punches above its price point really, really high. And I believe that it really performs high for the amount of money you pay. I mean, incredibly, incredibly high. It's very rare for units to win this award. And when it does, it means that I endorse it and I'm going to be using it myself. It's not cheap though, it's $2,500, but we will also be giving away this unit if you want a chance to win it in this video. So in the next six days, we're gonna be giving away every single day new audiophile gear. And this is in collaboration with the Samsung event. Uh, we just wanted to give you guys something back. So we started doing our own event and it's, and it's called the Impulse event. And it's called the Impulse event because it was impulsive. So I believe there's some questions to be answered. So some of you guys have been asking me, is this a international giveaway? And yes, it's an international giveaway anywhere in the world. As long as we can ship it, you will be able to get it. Now, second question, uh, how do you enter? Well, to enter, follow the instructions in the description of this video and in the pinned comment section. Follow it very carefully and make sure to enter because this is an incredible chance and I want you guys to win something and take something away from these giveaways. And the excitement doesn't end there. Our giveaway runs from the 13th to the 19th, but following up with that on the 20th to the 26th of September, Samsung is going to be doing their own event and they're going to have sales going on, hacks going on every single day, new sales, new hacks every single day. So it's going to be a fun month and let's make some winnings. But we, we got to understand why you're winning, right? So let's talk about the Burson Timekeeper 3i. So people have been asking me why I love this unit so much. I use this daily on my desktop and we'll talk about that in a minute when we go upstairs in my near field setup but this can also work on the stereo setup and we're gonna talk about that first because this is incredible for a stereo setup. It outputs 100 watts per channel in class AB, which is more than the Hegel H120 that Tujin bought and the unit that I love so much as well. Now I love Hegel units and why do I bring up Hegel? Because in terms of sound signature, it's very, very similar, if not better, on these Burson integrated amplifier and I absolutely fell in love with it. So let me break this down for you guys. So let's first of all talk about the sound quality you get out of it, the features, and how does it compare to the Hegel units. So first of all, the sound signature is much like the Hegel H190. It has this ballsy sound, it's really, really full in the mid-range. High frequency is clear and crisp sounding, has a dark background like the Hegel H190, and it really punches hard, makes the speakers sound bigger than they are, it's really, really scales. And I really love that about this unit. Sounds so much like the Halo units that I love, except it's more clear sounding and more detailed. And I love that. Now, moving on to the features. The feature on this unit is incredible. It has dual Sabre DAC chips balanced DAC. And so this is better than the Hegel units, in my opinion. So better how? So it sounds more crisp, in my opinion, more detailed than the DAX inside the uh, Hegels. I always say this, but I find the Hegel units, the bottleneck, the, the thing that's weighing it down is the digital section. And I think that can be improved. And that's why I encourage you to, you know, add separate decks and streamers to the Hegel units if you want to improve the sound. Well, you don't have to do that with the Burson unit because it has a very good deck built inside already and it sounds incredible. And how incredible? Well, here is a Cambridge Audio uh, DAC Magic 200M. This is a $500 deck and it sounds incredible. It's one of my favorite decks for $500. It sounds better than this, in my opinion. It's more balanced, more detailed, more neutral, yet, it has body to the sound and you know overall a very good match with the whole kit as an integrated unit. So I find it you know incredible and you know an integrated DAC that performs better than a $500 separate DAC says quite a lot in my opinion. Now the preamplifier functionality on the Burson Timekeeper 3i is also better than the Hegel units in my opinion. Quite frankly, the preamp if you use a pre-out of the Hegel units to run a separate amplifier or a separate 
powered speaker, it sounds like ass. And although I love Hegel amplifiers and their amplifier capability, unless you're using it as a one single unit, if you use like a pre-out or stuff like that, then it doesn't sound good with other units in the market. Well, with the Burst and Timekeeper 3i, it has a really good pre-out functionality. I've used it and it just sounds incredible as a pre-out. And I've said this before, but Burst and pre-out sounds incredible. So using this for powered monitors, for near field, for your stereo, or just running into another amplifier, you can do that with this and use it as a pre-amplifier. Uh, so stupid me, um, I was just about to complain about this remote and how unresponsive it is. But the thing is that all other version units ship with that remote and uh, I was scratching my head because why is it unresponsive on this unit? Turns out that the battery just died. I was just about to demonstrate to you the problem and the battery died just to show you that, you know, reviewers are not perfect and also that, you know, I've been using this nonstop. Now, if you wonder why I have this on its side on a vertical you know, plane, well, you can do that. It's meant to change the menu system so that it works that way. Or you can have it again horizontal and then flip this thing carefully. Ah, it's heavy with one hand so that it doesn't, um, so that it uh, lies horizontal. So you can have it both ways. Now this way would be beneficial for desktop real estate and I just do like it a little bit better. It looks cooler. And uh, so this is how I had it on my desk. Now, if you go into the settings, you do have uh, filters, which you guys know, I don't really see too much difference with filters um, in terms of sound quality. And you also get gain settings, high and low gain. Um, and the thing is, uh, the flicker here that you see is due to the frame rate. I can't change that or the video will look very, very weird. So this flicker doesn't really exist in real life, just to let you guys know, that would be very annoying. It doesn't happen in real life. Now here we have the uh, output settings. So this output is virtually all the output setting that this unit is capable of doing. So it has pre-out, which means that you can use this as a pre-amplifier and DAC. And it has DAC out, which means that you're using this just as a DAC. So don't set it to DAC out and then plug it to a power amplifier that doesn't have a volume control because then you can blow your speakers. That's full volume right there. Uh, here you can switch from you know, speaker to headphone. And the headphone jack is right here. And that's the power button that I pressed by accident just now. But that's the headphone jack. And then there's the microphone jack, which uh, is beneficial if you're on a desktop and you want to talk to someone, you know, your friend or someone on, uh, on a microphone that you already own. And the back here, I will show you. Um, so we can, we have the, uh, you know, all the controls here. This is a speaker, con uh, speaker tab. So you plug in your speaker cables here, banana, spade, whatever you want. And then we have the output, which can be, like I said, used as a pre-out or a DAC out. We have the input, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but that can be basically used as a, uh, uh, if you have a separate DAC, right? If you have a separate DAC like the DAC Magic or a higher end DAC like the Kitsune over there, right? And your those, you can plug it in there and use that DAC instead of the one that you're using in here. You have digital inputs, which means you have optical. So you will use that for like TV, you know, PlayStation, whatever, stuff like that. You have coax, um, and then you have USB-C uh, for USB input. Now, a lot of phones these days have USB-C, and you know, I guess you can use it that way, laptops as well. But I'm just not a fan of USB-Cs because it's a little bit fragile. It can bend easily, and it did happen to me before. So not a big fan of that, but I guess it's a give and take. Um, here, you have Bluetooth. Don't encourage you to use Bluetooth all the time, but it does have uh, aptx Bluetooth, so you can use it if you're in a, you know, uh, you have guests over or not. Okay, so back into the front, you have the settings here again. This is all the uh, digital inputs, so you can use, like I said, RCA. So that'll be using one of those stacks. For example, you would have RCA running into this unit, that will be the setting. Bluetooth, coax, and then optical. Uh, it says toss link there, it's just optical basically. And then USB-C, that is, okay. And that's the entirety of the unit. Uh, the last thing I do wanna mention is that this volume knob is incredibly, incredibly uh, lovely. I love it, love the feel of it. You know, it's all metal construction. 
Um, this entire chassis is using it as a heat sink, right? So basically here, you know, you can see on the all sides, you can see, you know, these um, kind of design here, and that's all being used as a heat sink to dissipate heat. It also has a better headphone amplifier for those that care. It has two watts power, which is incredible, class A. So that's better than the headphone amplifiers built inside the Hegel, in my opinion. By a large margin, it's, it's not a small difference. I find the Burson headphone amplifiers to sound way better, and it's no surprise here that the Burson units sound better in the headphone section. So if you don't care for the streamer functionality of the Hegel units, I definitely think that you should take a look at the Timekeeper 3i as an option. It saves you money and it has already a great DAC built inside that you don't need to necessarily switch out unless you're looking for a better higher end DAC. And you may be asking, then why did Tujin get the Hegel H120 and not the Burson Timekeeper 3i? And it has to do with my gripe as well with this unit is that it doesn't have balanced inputs. So if you're running long lengths of cables and you want a balanced input just to be safe, then this may not be the unit for you. But again, in terms of the sound signature, I have nothing to complain about. It sounds incredible. It sounds close to a Hegel H190, a $4,000 unit, but it outperforms it in a lot of ways like clarity, uh, detailed, you know, focus and all that good stuff. And you can also get a better DAC built inside, which is incredible for me. Now, there's some other key features with this unit that makes it a more enticing uh, integrated amplifier to go with. And that is that you can change out the op amps inside. So now we have the internal of the Burson Timekeeper 3i. Now, what's funny is a lot of the cases, manufacturers don't like it when you go inside their units. In fact, a lot of the cases, it voids your warranty. But in case of Burson, they actually want you to go inside, so they made it super easy by using four bolts that you just take out and then lift up. It has always been a breeze to open up these units. Now, the thing they want you to change, uh, or you know, if you want to change, is the op amps. Now, these are op amps that you can change easily. This already comes with the V6 Vivid upgraded uh, op amp from Burson. But Burson makes one of the highest grade op amps in the market and they've been known for that. In fact, I've known about Burson op amps and used them before I even, even considered buying their headphone amplifiers um, in my journey. So their op amps are incredible and they do make a difference in the sound signature that you perceive. Now here is the uh, Vivid, uh, not the Vivid, the Classic. So this is the Vivid, the red one, which is the one that I like. And then this one is the Classic, which I do also like, but this is a little bit more, in my opinion, less refined than the Vivid. And it really depends on the unit you're changing it on, but on the Timekeeper 3i, the differences are very minimal between this and this, but I still find the red one, the Vivid, a little bit more uh, clear sounding. <laughs> Ironic, because it's called Vivid and more refined. So again, you have four of them here that you can change, that you can see um, very easily. But if you see the uh, little op amps that actually come stock with a lot of the units, including other, other brand integrated amplifiers, and they're usually the very tiny and very small, like a chip. Um, here it's very well constructed and they do make a very big difference in my opinion on some of these units. Um, on the Timekeeper 3i, I think the biggest difference is from the stock op amp to the upgraded one. Whether you go with this one, the orange one, or this one, really I think you can't miss. Uh, I think they're both great. But if you like a little bit more um, natural, I guess, more analog, on this unit specifically, I think I would say the classic may do you good if you do like analog system, turntables and stuff like that. This is for people like me who likes a little bit more detail, a little bit more resolution, a little bit more, um, a little bit more refinement in the high frequency. That's what I would go with is the uh, Vivid, the, the, the red one is my favorite, like I said. And if you want, you can get both, which you know will run you quite a bit in terms of the dollar amount. But again, you don't have to get a you know soldering iron or solder. None of that is involved. This is all just handwork, open up, just easy to do. Now, other than that, again, internal design is you know fabulous, just like any Burson integrated amplifiers or amplifiers, uh, high grade LNAC capacitors, and what they call a max current design. 
um, delivering the highest current possible with their circuitry without having to have big toroidal transformers. So, and again, it, it's really, the, the proof is in the listening, as they say, when I listen to it driving the KEF speakers or the Electa motors or the Magna Pants, really, I can see that it has a lot of body to the sound, headroom and control, and you can't fake that. So yeah, beautiful internal work. So I was going to show you guys my near field setup, um, but as always, it's really messy upstairs in my workstation. I'll link to my near field uh, video that I did, near field setup video that I did in the link description below as well. But I'm using KEF LS50 Meta speakers near field and it's a tremendous match with the Burson integrated amplifier because it has a sound signature so similar to the Hegel. Hegel and KEF speakers are known to work very well. That's what they use at KEF uh, for shows, uh, you know, to showcase how good their speakers and Hegel integrated amplifier sound. They match really well with one another, so that's what they use. Anyways, uh, and this time I'm gonna show you guys what I used in my stereo setting with the Burson to kind of, you know, show you what goes well, what doesn't go well, you know, if any. So here we have the Electa Amator. This is a Sonos Faber speaker uh, what, worth about $10,000. So this is the highest point we'll go in this video. Works tremendously well. Again, th these speakers I said as before is great with uh, Hegel integrated amplifiers. And so anything that works well with Hegel integrated amplifiers, Magnapan, uh, Electa Amators, you know, Kev speakers all work well with Burson here. And uh, if we go over here, uh, we can see a bunch of speakers here on the walls. Um, this is a speaker that I want to talk to you guys about. This is the, uh, the lighting is terrible here, but this is the um, ELAC Unify reference speakers. And these are incredible speakers. About a about thousand dollars for the bookshelf. And it's a great match, especially with the Burson integrated amplifier. I would say it gets like 80% to this. <laughs> yeah. Sounds incredible. Um, I definitely recommend you guys try it out or have a listen. If you have heard the ELAC Unified Reference and like it, pairing it up with the Burson just brings it up to the next level in my opinion. Now lastly, I want to answer the fundamental question, like is this it? Is Burson the new king of integrated amplifiers? You know, I just said the Hegel is the king again. You know, do you, what, are we, what are you doing, Jay? You know, are you switching? No. So here's the thing, right? Uh, Burson and Hegel is two different things. If you want a unit that's all in one compact that has a streamer built in, that's still Hegel. You don't get a streamer with that. You don't, you don't get a streamer with that. So, but you want something that has a better DAC built inside with better pre-out functionality. But if you don't care about that, then still Hegel is it. And Hegel H190, if you have the money for it, $4,000, it still has more power, more headroom than that. So it's really, you know, I still think Hegel is king, is king when it comes to all-in-one units, right, for people. But if you're someone that wants to, you know, add something later on, like, you know, use that as a pre-out, then yeah, the Burson is better. Has a better pre-out, has a better DAC built inside, and the amplifier is, you know, 100 watts. That sounds like a Hegel H190. That's a bargain in my opinion. So that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. And if this video was helpful to you, make sure to click that subscribe button and like this video. And I'll see you guys on the next one.